you know what a specific invention has saved the most lives in this world it's not antibiotics or it's not a new surgical technique it's something as basic as a toilet uh, what is public health and health policy according to you if you really want to make such a huge difference to lives of people you have to think big and that's why i think uh, these 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 fields impact life so much basically it's like a treatment algorithm for the community to make it very simple and honestly i feel that's how i approach it is it a clinical or a non clinical branch Hello, Aslas. Welcome back to a new podcast of Medaslas. So today with us we have Doctor Nitar Aravindan. Today's guest is a doctor who is rewriting the rule book of what a medical career can look like. He is an MD in Community and Family Medicine from AIMS Rishikesh. But instead of sticking to the usual clinical path, he has ventured into data analytics, health policy, and even entrepreneurship. He is the founder of Statistics Med, a healthcare analytics startup. that helps doctors and healthcare professional make sense of complex data in simple visual way while most of run away from the dashboard he is busy making them beautiful and actionable on the top of that he is currently pursuing his masters that is msc in global health policy from london school of hygiene and tropical medicine and somewhere between running a startup and deep diving into policy papers he finds time for meditation which he calls his superpower for staying sane in the chaos also dr nisar is working as an assistant professor in akash medical college of bangalore so welcome dr nisar to this podcast of medasler uh, this was a very short introduction from my side about you but i would also like you to introduce to our audience thank you so much samay for having me uh, we've connected before um, very happy with the work you're doing with med hustler so good luck to you with that um i think the introduction covered most things i don't have much to add all that i would say is uh, i'm a person who tries to learn new things uh, stay updated and uh, try and solve problems which i have encountered during my under graduation and post graduation and hopefully uh, we are able to arrive at some solution so accolades everything it will be there one by one they'll keep coming and going as it really uh, you know it's just a sticker or something you post about <laughs> but at the end of the day the matters what real impact you're having so yeah nothing much to add from my end yeah thank you so much for uh, considering this and appearing sharing your insights so uh, before we proceed further sir i want to uh, tell our viewers about the agenda of this podcast so mm-hmm. basically is tailored in a such a way that uh, for all the mbba students who are currently in their uh, pre final or final years of mbba so or currently right. pursuing and are looking for career opportunities beyond clinics or also integration of clinics and beyond clinics so mm-hmm. those who help care from an eagle side uh, rather than just dealing one on one patient so this will be a podcast also for them who are looking for career uh, aspects in community and family medicine mm-hmm. and or Their policy and research. So, sir, uh, starting with the basics, uh, what is public health and health policy according to you? Okay, so public health is anything uh, concerning health that is under the sun, including the sun. To be honest with you, that's how broad public health is. Whereas health policy, like you have treatment algorithms, right? We use in medicine. but for community health we kind of use the same algorithm what you do in an algorithm first is you you kind of know how to identify an issue right what are the common uh, diagnostic criteria for a disease or how do you identify a certain issue in the community level okay and what do you need to do to solve it what is the actual treatment or what is the solution to it then when you apply the solution how do you assess for improvement for example if uh, our child has dehydration how do you assess for improvement right same thing so how do you assess for improvement or worsening in uh, the community setting for any major issue and what criteria will you use to say that the issue has been solved or cured so basically it's like a treatment algorithm for the community to make it very simple and honestly i feel that's how i approach it so yeah that's that's what i feel is uh, health policy 
how do they impact the lives of individuals and communities um, more so more than individuals it's about communities itself hence the name public health community medicine interchangeably it's used where we look at things that can solve for way more people now uh, do you know what a specific invention has saved the most lives in this world it's not antibiotics or it's not a new surgical technique it's something as basic as a toilet i'm not kidding so toilet is the one that has saved the most lives then followed by uh, you know soap then followed by um, uh, vaccines right so uh, if if you really want to make such a huge difference to lives of people you have to think big and that's why i think uh, these 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 fields impact life so much yes uh, thank you so much for all these insights sir uh, moving forward i want to ask you like uh, can you explain to our viewers what is community medicine including its scope roles key domains and long term career uh, goals in this uh, community medicine field sure so community medicine um see i uh, would prefer not to stick to definitions because that's not really going to help us just stick towards practical uh, community medicine and public health for that matter has many domains one is medicine itself where we learn about communicable non communicable diseases nutrition maternal child health there is epidemiology also where basically we understand the determinants of disease and how they spread in a population what affects a certain disease to spread in a population how we can intervene next there is biostatistics itself uh, we need to understand and uh, uh, we need to be good with numbers that's that's part of that environmental health that's also a very crucial thing social and behavioral sciences because you're talking to communities you're talking to people at different educational levels different economic status different occupations cultures so it's about that you need to know how to talk to different behaviors and management because uh, it's not just about seeing one patient seeing next patient it's about making health system changes which can really affect the way we um, you know deliver health care so and then finally there is health policy where you put all of this together and give a proper solution to a major issue so it's a very interdisciplinary field and uh, i like the field majorly because it's there's no limit to it and uh, especially the idea i give to many students is you open a newspaper there is definitely something going to be about public health you don't need to go to a journal you don't need to subscribe to any journal you open a newspaper there is something public health related and uh, you asked me also about uh, long term uh, scope and impact on society also so each of these fields by themselves if you are interested they have a very large scope especially in today's world after the covid-19 pandemic people have taken uh, public health way more seriously at least i hope they have and they are really very well informed and now with ai coming in there is so much work to be done especially in india the world largest population so we talk about community medicine like the largest community for a country itself uh, would be the population right so it's a it's a huge opportunity and um, yeah we'll talk further about this like what you can do and what really works in your favor yes so sir there are students a set of students who are generally confused uh, where they say community medicine is it a clinical or a non clinical uh, branch so okay. can you provide this with example uh, that uh, what in which category does it falls mm, okay so i'll give an approximate percentage split all right Uh, i would say that uh, community medicine is about 30% clinical and 70% non clinical now clinical wise um, i mean uh, i would have to choose the park textbook that's what most students would know you have so many uh, you know disease protocols for communicable and non communicable disease management mch nutrition uh, and these are all part of uh, clinical aspects which i was discussing then there is uh, so this also parts forms a part of the family medicine uh, discussion there rest of it maybe epidemiology environmental health planning management health programs may fall under non clinical yeah so uh, this is what i would say um, would really uh, make it a clinical versus a non clinical subject So, it's so a very important question when someone thinks about any field. Uh, mm-hmm. It is more about a person than a branch. 
So, what, in your opinion, what should be the mindset of student who want mm. to enter the of community medicine and family medicine? Okay. First thing is, um, they should be open to thinking differently from what society perceives as a doctor. Okay. I mean, if uh, someone asks uh, first year MBBS students, imagine a doctor. What would they say? White coat, stethoscope, you know, with a pen, looking at a patient to the side. And or going and uh, cutting, uh, doing surgery, things like that. See, some aspects of it is there in community medicine. You do see patients in the outpatient setting. But uh, that image has been fed. So you should be okay with not being that classical image most times. Because um, you will be working with communities. You may not be uh, directly seeing patients from day morning to evening. And many of my relatives, they will ask me, what is your specialization? So <laughs> it's a very difficult thing to explain sometimes. So I just say I'm a family medicine physician, public health specialist. If they get it, they get it. Otherwise, uh, I'll just respectfully say, oh, yeah, this is what I do. So thing is, uh, people like simplicity. They know, you know, um, uh, some people will say, Pacho wala doctor, Haddi wala doctor, Katni wala doctor. So this is a little bit, if you're okay with uh, being asked many questions about what you exactly do, and uh, you don't want to stand out a little bit, then this is not a very comfortable branch. They all have their place, clinical uh, departments. No doubt, you really need it. I mean, we work with them closely. But uh, what I usually do is I have so much more understanding of real-world situations about how people react to certain things or what are their perceptions? Why do people do certain things? So another thing is you need a lot of patience. What happens if you are a doctor or you do a surgery, you immediately see the patient after a week of surgery, he gets discharged, they go home. That's it. Your job is done, right? Here, it's not like that. Like you have to set up systems. Imagine you start uh, training ASHA workers on how to detect malnutrition in the houses. Okay. So among all of this, you don't know some child she may detect and then they may go to a certain center. Then the child may get uh, treated and then they come back you may not hear of it directly or you may hear somebody else say it thing is you don't have see it happen in real time so you need a lot of patience to kind of uh, be okay with not being in the limelight all the time so we're like uh, <laughs> you've seen uh, the dark night right so it's <laughs> you're not really always visible but uh, with a silent protector <laughs> if you were to call it that but yeah, in all seriousness, uh, you need to have a lot of patience and you need to have a mindset of not really bothering or trying to explain to others what exactly you do as long as you enjoy what you do. Yeah. So uh, I'm very glad you mentioned that thing. Uh, I was going through a series of podcasts before uh, drafting the question for this podcast. So the uh -huh. very uh, common thing was mentioned that uh, when we explain this thing that what we do as a community medicine physician to our friends and relatives. So it becomes challenging to uh, explain them. So thank you for bringing this. So yep. sir, uh, uh, like uh, should this career be viewed as an escape from clinical medicine or do you think there is a, a lot of clinical relevance in this? I do feel there's still a lot of clinical relevance. At the end of the day, it's patients and people, right? So it will always be there. You cannot escape from it. Rather, it's, I would say, those who are uh, clinically, you know, very well-oriented. Uh, many senior doctors, I don't know if you know, uh, Dr. V.K. Paul, he's a pediatrician. He is the member health at ETIO. So he's a neonatologist, right? He's a pure clinician, right? You are first 28 days of life. But now he's a public health uh, expert now. I mean, he's working. He's got a WHO mention as well. Thing is, if you're very good and very... Um, you know, you care a lot about your patients, you will still go out in the community. Like, okay, why is why are these kind of people coming again and again? I got to go out and see what's wrong. Imagine uh, a kid, okay, uh, he has asthma. He comes every day to your clinic. You give inhalers. You go back. Again, he comes back after a week. You go to his uh, house. You see there's a construction site. There's so much dust. The kid doesn't cover up with a mask. The parents just don't bother. So what will you do? It's, it's, it's a burden on the doctor. It's a burden on the patient. They're spending so much money. So an actual very strongly oriented clinical doctor would go out of their way to make sure that they don't come back to the hospital. So it's not saying that, you know, oh, there are patients where I don't have any more patients coming to my clinic. No, you will always have people that are sick, unfortunately. But you do want to 
prevent people that are in the border line you know what i'm saying so example i'll give you now uh, ministry of health uh, gave a guideline for uh, leprosy treatment there's posi bacillary and multi bacillary i think many should previously posi bacillary had two drugs multi bacillary had three drugs as of april 2025 now it's three drugs for uh, posi bacillary three drugs for multi bacillary as well now is this clinical or not absolutely it's clinical uh, finally you have to plan about how many drugs you're going to procure it's a new drug altogether and you have to train the people you have to inform the dermatologists this is what the guideline is and you if you are yourself are working in a uh, health center you also have to start prescribing this new regimen right so absolutely it's spot on clinical but uh, <clears throat> i would also say it's like clinical or not clinical it's not like a light switch where it's on and off i would say it's a fan regulator you can say how much clinical you want to do or how much clinical you don't want to do it's it's individual resident some of them they really like to see patients i also do like to see patients and we have our own non profit health clinic that we see uh, that we run here in bangalore i do see patients it, it gives me great joy to speak to them i spend lots of time with them so uh, it depends on how much i want to dedicate i would say at the end of the day you are still a doctor to your relatives or whoever it may be you are still a person who they come to at the middle of the night or call saying this has happened so you have no uh, excuse to say i don't uh, this is not my job uh, you have to listen to the latest advances you got to stay updated whatever your branch may be so just because you are a derma or a radiologist doesn't mean you don't uh, do cpr you are mbbs first that's like a core thing so that whole clinical non clinical maybe it's how you spend the rest of the career but doctor is a clinician full stop <laughs> that's what i would say Yes, sir. The key takeaway point from this answer, I would like to highlight that it is for your personal choice to regulate your life. How much clinical want you want, mm-hmm. and how much clinical work you want. So there Correct. is always some space for you to transition between the two roles. Absolutely. So, so moving forward to the uh, residency in MD in community medicine and family medicine. So, mm-hmm. sir, uh, take us through like what is the duration? What is the syllabus? How are the posting? what is the research thesis conferences and and how are the examinations so can you please walk us through this whole uh, 